It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 203, entitled Camera On Off. It was recorded on Monday, the 4th of April, 2022. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and this week I'm joined by three guests. I'm joined by Remka Stavries, I'm joined by Ines van Dyke, and, well, we're kind of joined by Cameron Jones, but there was a complete tech breakdown, and he wasn't really able to stick around except in the comments. But nevertheless, we ploughed on. There was a whole load of stuff to talk about in the WordPress space this week. First up, we talk about the team proposing enabling in 6.0, WordPress 6.0, the fact that WebP images will be created by default. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? The full site editing call for testing is on number 13 and we talk about how you can get involved in that. WordPress.org pattern creator is now open to the public so that you can create your own patterns. Also, we talk about the fact that WordCamp Asia is about to start again. It's happening in February next year, and they're looking to set up an organizing team. Fabulous new plugin called Snow Monkey, which enables you to style beautifully core WordPress blocks. And then we get into quite a lengthy conversation about Facebook and the fact that they are being sued for misrepresenting their ad revenue. There's a little bit of silliness towards the end as well, but I hope that you enjoy it. I am joined by three fabulous guests. We've got uh, Remkus. How are you doing, Remkus? Uh, ex- you are excellent. Remkus, I have no biography written down for you, so I'm going to ask you to there, there bio yourself. There, there is one, actually. Oh, you see? Yeah. Nothing could possibly go right. <laughs> Will you read it out? <laughs> I actually made I actually made a point of uh, of putting it in there. Uh, <laughs> Go on, but I, will I, you read it out for me? I uh, I shall. So uh, head of people and partners at Circle and uh, WordPress veteran. Thank you so much. I really really appreciate it. Remkus, of course, has been on the show many many times before. He's um. He's got a lot of interesting opinions, so hopefully we'll share some of those today. There's quite a lot of WordPressy stuff to talk about, and we've got somebody new on the show today. We've never had Ines uh, Van Dyke before, but um, how are you Hello. doing? How are you? Um, I'm good. Yeah, I'm sad that the weather's nasty where I'm at, but um, otherwise, I'm good. Thank you. You, you're, you're in Holland, but I hope yes. you'll forgive me for this. You, you have <laughs> no. I no, know it's coming. <laughs> what what you have a very very English accent. Yeah, yeah. This is um. Uh, I've been dating someone who's a Brit for a year and a half now, and he's very very proud of the fact that I now speak the Queen's English. Apparently, you you yeah. You're you are ingli- <laughs> indistinguishable from somebody who might live next door to me. Anyway, very oh, nice to meet you. you. I'll give you your bio. Um, interaction quality specialist is what Ines does. Um, she's got over a decade worth of experience in the WordPress environment. So it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and come back several times into the future. And we also have Cameron. Cameron, it's like four in the morning or something over in Australia. Thank you for staying up. It's not that bad. It's about half 10, I think, something like that. How are you doing, Cameron? Yeah, it's like half past 10 here. How are you doing? You all right? It is, I think, a bit laggy. Uh, Cameron was saying to me before the show began that he was suffering a bit of lag. So what we'll probably have to do for Cameron, if, if you're unable to solve the lag, just keep maybe refresh or something, Cameron. And if that doesn't solve it, we'll just make sure to give you some breathing room so that we'll make sure that you're able to get your stuff in, even if it's not quite so toing and froing. And Cameron, I don't know if it's you. I suspect it might be somebody is clicking their mouse and it's being picked up really loudly on the microphone. So if, if that is you, I don't know if you're able to, to kind of mute your mic in between times, but that would be really, really helpful. Thank you so much, um, Cameron. Hopefully you can hear us. Let's see how we go. Okay, let's share the cameras, get the screen up. This is WP Builds. This is our website. If you want to keep updated, you can click the subscribe link at the top there. And on this website, we basically drone on about WordPress. We're on episode 203 of this show, and we're on episode, oh, I don't know, what are we on? 272 of our main podcast. And if you're inter- interested in WordPress, you start and get yourself subscribed. 
a couple of people dropping into the chat. Hello, Rob Cairns. Nice to have you with us. Really nice to see you once more. And also, um, Peter Ingersoll, what is he saying? He's saying, my clocks are finally aligned with Nathan's. Yes, we had problems because last week everything went out of kilter because the British changed. But hopefully, hopefully this week will be fine. Okay, let's crack on, shall we? If you like images, this will be good news to you for the longest period of time. In fact, I would say since forever, since I've been using the internet, my stock thing has been to use a JPEG. Whenever I've taken a photo on my camera or downloaded something from the internet, more or less all the time, it has been a JPEG. Maybe it was a PNG, which I believe is pronounced ping. Um, but we've got some new image formats coming down the pipe, and one of them is called WebP. Apparently, it was created by Google. Not that that really matters. But according to Sarah Gooding on the WP Tavern website later last week, she was saying that the WordPress team, I think in, the, in version 6, they might well put it in to core so that if you drop any kind of image, well, particularly JPEGs, it will then on the back end create a WebP version for you. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what's the point of that? Well, the point of that is that it uses, apparently, according to this, 30% less file size. So let's say you've got a one meg JPEG, you might end up with a sort of six, 700 kilobyte um, WebP, which is obviously going to sort of speed things up. And the intention would be you drop a JPEG into the media library and it creates a WebP version. I cannot see the downside to this, but some people in the comments are saying, well, hang on a minute, maybe it's going to make additional um, use of your hard disk space because we don't seem to have the clarity yet on what it's going to do. If it's creating an additional image, does that mean that instead of, I don't know, a thumbnail, Thumbnail and a medium and a large and all of that. We're going to now have a WebP and will they be thumbnail, medium or large as well? So anyway, I think this is really good. I know Remcus, one of your big things is performance. This yep. is performance, right? It, it is. Uh, and I, I, the, the comments are not wrong. It will create more, uh, it, it will eat more storage, sure. But uh, I think that's a non-discussion. Uh, the performance gain is, uh, is uh, 30% is pretty big. Um, it, 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 there's no argument. The quality is is the same. Um, you are required to push less over the data. So there's there's really no reason why you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't want to do this. It makes, it makes stuff faster. Um, we should all want this. Apparently, um, I, if you look at the, if you look at like a JPEG and you look at a WebP, there is, it's just indistinguishable. You, you know, yeah, human eye just cannot see the difference. No, uh, uh, I've been using uh, WebP for a couple of years now. There's, there is no difference. There's, uh, it's, it's a built-in feature from Cloudflare, for instance. So Cloudflare can service your images as well as a, from a CDN perspective. And uh, it's if you have a pro account, it services uh, the WebP format. Um, there's yeah, there's there's no downside, uh, and storage is really not the thing you want to be uh, using as the argument to not do this. Yeah, that's a good point. If you're faster, you're going to get more discovered. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, Ines, what what do you make of this? Um, to be honest with you, this is a, a a bit that I know very little about. My my main thing's always been uh, the support of WooCommerce um, and and assorted other plugins performance has never really been my gig hmm. so i've got very very little to say about this i'm sorry would, would you would you though if you were uploading product images would you be telling clients and what have you you know from now on use webp i'm just going to put a graphic up actually we've got um a link from here to the can i use website which illustrates i think i think a couple of years ago if you use webp when Remka started to use it, there was probably patchy support for it. Maybe some browsers didn't offer it. Yeah, so there was there was a fallback uh, mechanism in place. Yeah. So if the um, browser supported it, great. If not, here's the old dirty JPEG. Yeah, but I think now basically that, that the time for that excuse has sort of gone away. It would appear that you know now you're going to be doing this, and and every single piece of software that I've got that creates images, be those product images for WooCommerce or whatever you. They, they have the option to create it as a WebP image. So 
I don't know, Ines, whether you'd be telling your clients, yeah, stop using JPEG, start using WebP. Well, I mean, um, if you look at some of the, the clients that WooCommerce has, um, they have very, very, very large inventory um, for their products. So they they have massive storage needs for, for their imagery. Um, and if you gain a 30% on, on performance, like Remka said, that's massive. So yeah, I could definitely see that being recommended to um, to power users. Yeah, it says here, and I'm going to quote, uh, using WebP images creates websites that are lighter and faster compared to JPEG images. WebP images generated by WordPress are almost always smaller, 30% plus or minus variation on average. Um, you won't even notice what's going on in WordPress. It looks like you'll just upload it and it'll all happen in the background. I think the concern isn't like, should people do this? I think the obvious answer to that is yes. It's just whether or not WordPress should do it by default. If you upload a JPEG, should there be a toggle somewhere to say, no, leave my JPEGs alone. I want them. If you can find one single argument that sticks. <laughs> Go into the comments and uh, and see if you can, I, see if you can I, combat I've them. Seen them. I've seen it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's... <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm... We seem to have lost Cameron. Let's see if we can drag Cameron back in. I, I think, not, as we I, said at the top of the show. Yeah, I'm not about to jump in the comment sections for highly opinionated stuff that is not considering uh, the, the the actual benefit first. Like, if whatever your, your negative about it is and you're not weighing in what it actually brings, then you're missing out. There's, yeah. You're, you're just... Are you saying that you're not in it for the, for the WordPress drama, Remkes? Oh, that would be a way to describe it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 I do not engage with WordPress drama. That is correct. I've had my, I've had my, uh, what is it, 15 years now? Uh, op, uh, opportunity of 15 years to do so, and I, I still don't see the benefit. So, stay away. Progress is progress. Just move forward. Yeah, I um, I genuinely don't have a clue what the technology is. Somebody was somebody actually in the comments was complaining that they were distrustful of anything anything Google, and um, I would, I really don't know. Rightfully what to make so. That comment. Yeah, but right, I, I, I mean, so, if it's a, this is a format. Yeah, yeah right. They're not, they're not listening in. Yeah, precisely. So um, it has been created by Google. I, I genuinely don't know what the difference is in terms of the technology and how they squash it to such a great extent. But my guess is that it won't be too long before something supersedes uh, WebP and we get something better. So for now, that seems to be the best that we've got. And it's going to be potentially switched on um, in WordPress 6.0. If you are watching this show, um, you will notice that Cameron uh, keeps sort of popping in and going away again. Uh, Cameron, I'm really sorry if it's not working out for you today. Uh, if you are frustrated and can't hear us and this is all just too much of a drama for you fear not we'll have you back on another day but i'm more than happy to keep dragging you back in uh, if you wish to stay that would be it would be lovely to have your commentary can you for example cameron hear me at the moment and the tumbleweed i think il illustrates that Probably Cameron can't hear me, and if he can't hear me, I'll we'll we'll keep him on the screen as long as he wants to be there. But if things improve, Cameron, uh, we'll have you in. But be sure to shout out at some point if the the stream returns to normal. Okay, that was WebP. I'm quite excited about that. I'm going to start exporting them as my default from this point on. The next one though uh, is more of a community story. We had Anne McCarthy on. When did we have Anne McCarthy? Like a week ago or two weeks ago, I think it was. And um, we didn't get into this. We were talking about her museum of block art at that point. But last week, pretty much late last week, right at the end, she is, of course, in charge at the moment of the full site editing uh, kind of testing program. Uh, it's called the full site editing outreach program, to give it its proper name. And she's on the lookout for some people to give her some feedback. The overview um, is that she wants testers uh, to test some new bits and pieces, which are hopefully going to drop in 6.0. If you look at the screen, you can see that I've um, I've highlighted the bits and pieces that, uh, that we're going to be talking about. Uh, let me find the right bit. So let me go right to the bottom where we've got the test for instructions. So she basically wants you to sign up for the program. 
Um, create an author, add some structure, add a no results block, which I find is a curious new block coming around because with the query loop block, if there's no results currently, it doesn't really do very much. But there's now going to be a no results block, which you can use uh, to display what, what like a placeholder, basically, if there's nothing there. Um, and some styling. See what you make of it. And I don't know. I don't know if this is the kind of thing you guys get involved in. I confess, much to my chagrin, I don't seem to find the time to do this, but this is call number 13. Um, and you can find it. The piece is called FE Program call, Testing Call Number 13, Authoring an Author Template, because that's what it's all about. Innes, got anything on this or Remkus or indeed Cameron? Honestly, if it's, if it's something that Anne is spearheading, I've worked with her for years. Um, I sadly left Automatic about a month ago. Anne is just fantastic. She's the hardest worker that I've ever met. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm sad to not be working with her again. Uh, but maybe this is a good opportunity to get back in it. I was uh, I was saying that of of for the year 2021, I think she's the name that's come up more in my feed than almost anybody else in the WordPress space. I mean, she just seems, it's relentless. I genuinely well, don't know when she gets a time to relax and rest. It seems phenomenal. And that's just the stuff that is visible to to everyone. But she does a lot within Automatic as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah You're going to be testing one. it out, Remkus? Yeah, that says no, doesn't it? That look on the face there. <laughs> You know what? I, I um, yeah, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not pulled in this direction. No, you don't uh, like it's, the, it's, you, like you yeah. said, it's the time. It's the, uh, I, I, I have a like, um, there's a few architectural things now already with FSE that I go like, why are we doing it like that? So the placeholder block for when your Res query results show nothing. Why not yeah. have that in the query, query block? I mean, there's and there's loads of those things around. So I'm like, I, it's already a lost battle to me. So I'll just it's work interesting with whatever because... is the outcome of it, and and yeah. go from there because. But you're very much a part, part of the community and um yeah, and, yeah but they don't need I... any more grumpy old men uh <laughs> <laughs> but the the thing is it's curious because the the whole project is built upon this isn't it and despite the fact that the, th the three of us four of us uh if cameron can hear us are really into the project and want to advance finding the time to actually do this meaningful stuff is 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 difficult right i really do struggle and obviously, if it was like a corporate entity and we were all getting paid and somebody said, right, sit down here for an hour and test that, that would that would it be really easy for us to justify that. But me forging an hour or an hour and a half, I, I, I find it, that's a very difficult thing to do. And although Anne goes to great lengths to make it as easy as possible, um, it's still difficult. And I wonder I wonder how the um, how the project suffers as a result of that. Yeah, it is difficult setting aside time for this. Mm. Ines, it sounded like you were going to say something. Yeah, I think this is a, a an issue that you have throughout the the community, right? It's it's not just the testing; it's it's basically everything. Uh, you have a, a a number of larger companies who can afford supplying their people to do stuff within the WordPress community. And then you've got people like me who do freelance and it's like, well, this is time that I, I want to give to the project because, you know, I'm part of that ecosystem. Um, but it's very difficult to, to kind of justify that against, but I'm also selling my hours. Um, so I've always felt like there's, there's a bit of an imbalance there. And on the one hand, it's quite natural. And on the other, it's something that, yeah, I'd love to see fixed although i don't really have the the solution for that yeah this is a perennial debate this comes up all the time isn't it you know about yeah. the, the ability of those people who can contribute being uh how to describe it you, you probably need to be on very stable economic grounds to be able to afford to really 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 get stuck into the weeds um but that's i guess that's the way it goes at the moment anyway there it is it is full site editing call for testing 
number 13. Go check it out if you uh, if you want to help. We're sticking with WP Tavern. Now, this I, I think this is cool. I'm going to put another piece on the screen here. This is, ooh, it went and it came and it went. This is uh, Justin Tadlock over on the table. Tavern, the table. I like that. I'm going to rename that site, the WP Table. The WordPress.org pattern creator is now open to the public. So, yeah, that's basically it. There's this new ability to, well, essentially, there's a link on this page. Uh, it's called the Pattern Creator. Let me just click and open it up. You need a WordPress.org account, which I'm sure many of us will have. And if you do have one of those and you're logged in, you can click on the link. The link takes you to WordPress.org forward slash patterns forward slash new. Are, are we to conclude? Are we to conclude, Nathan, that you don't have a WordPress.org profile? I do have a WordPress.org account, but I'm in in, in an incognito window because <laughs> there's so many websites that I'm logged into. Like I'm logged into the WP Tavern website, and if I go to anything, it'll possibly show what plugins are installed and things like that. So I've got to be uh, everything's on a everything's on an incognito uh, tab for this. But yes, I do have good, a good WordPress. Rebound, good rebound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I uh, I had that one prepared. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, go go over here, and you can now actually start to create the the patterns all on your own and prior to this that's been a fairly tricky thing to do as with all these things you know it, it it's pretty minimal at the moment um, there's there's a, a lot though that Justin thinks there is to like about it um, and I'll just quote he says the pattern directory has the potential for an on-ramp for creators who want to contribute to the WordPress project but do not know where to start the barrier to entry is one of the lowest in the community sounds good. There is no requirement to write code or understand all the intricacies of theme design. It is nowhere near as complex as plugin development. It's simply a visual builder that allows sharing art with the world. So basically go log in, tinker, and you can <laughs> save your patterns. And then hopefully next time you log in, um, they'll still be there and you can share them with the world. There are a few little gotchas Justin, as always, I think is quite good at you know exploring and finding the pulling things apart, should we say, and discovering where the the problems lie. And he says it's it seems to be built on top of the 2021 theme, and as a result, it's not entirely agnostic. He he would prefer it if it had been built on 2022, because there are certain little uh, conflicts which occur. However, just sticking to the broad story, I just think this is really really cool idea now log in completely independent of any website that you might have so you don't need to put like some sort of testing site up you just want a repository of little patterns that you created little experiments trying something out you can share them other people can glance at them and what have you this is cool and uh and with that i'm going to open it up to you three to argue about what do you reckon do you like it I I I I I I'm, I wouldn't go I won't go as far as Justin saying that this is uh, opening up uh, people's art submissions, but there might be some of those uh, who are being uh, added to the to the li uh, pattern library. Um, but I like the whole concept of it. Uh, there's the you know I need to solve this particular layout. I've done it, and here you go. Everybody else can use it. I think that's very much in uh, in line with uh, creating and sharing. And, uh, and together making it better. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really wondering though, how is quality verified? Because if anyone can just su submit experiments, the, the risk that you have is that you very quickly have like an overcrowded marketplace where you can't really find anything to your liking. So I'm not, I'm not really clear on how this is going to yeah, so the there's a pattern directory, which is a different yeah. thing. So it's like the plugin directory. And then there's this mm -hmm. pattern creator. So this is really just like a launch pad for you and your ideas. And then if you wish to submit those to the pattern directory, much like themes and plugins, there's a bit, bit of an oversight um, of that. So this is really, it's just like a blank canvas. Go here play around right. Um, right. and experiment and then save them away for a, you know, like a rainy day if you come up with one or two that you really like. Um, and, and I just think that's just such a really nice idea, especially for those people who, I don't know, for one reason or other, perhaps don't have a dedicated development environment or they, you know, they're just new to WordPress and they want to figure out how these things work and they don't have a website stacked away for that. The majority of people that I've spoken to over the past six years have gone, 
a development site what do you mean what is that oh so, yes <laughs> The advent of page builders have changed things rather a lot, I think, in the WordPress space. And, you know, I would imagine that a lot of people literally have no idea of what kind of thing is going on in the background when they put a page together. And so well, Justin makes not, that point. It's not just page builders, though. It's uh, it's the end users of WordPress. So people who are in need of having a, a website for whatever reason, for their hobby or their their business or whatever they're not necessarily web people so the end users will not have a clue about what it takes to put something together decently beyond the basics uh, is my experience a lot of people that i've run into have have kind of stumbled into wordpress because it's such a familiar name and so many hosts offer it as like a, a pre-installed software doesn't mean that they necessarily understand, you know, good maintenance principles or or development principles. So I'm not sure if it's down to page builders per se. It's I think it's more of a end user education thing. One of the um, one of the points that Justin makes, and I think this is a really nice feature, is that the the creator tool is integrated with i'm going to get the word right because i often say the wrong thing you know the 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 media library the free openverse that's the one i'm after so this growing albeit very small well not very small but small compared to something like i don't know shutterstock or something like that but this growing free source of images uh, that is built in. So you could, for example, go and you know that you wished, I don't know, uh, Justin's example contains things. It looks like um, fabric or something like that. Somebody's obviously taken pictures of fabric. And so he's downloaded those and used them and he's completely aware that it's for free and he doesn't have to leave the interface to drag all those things in. And as time goes on and that open verse library gets bigger and bigger, then this whole creation process will get easier and easier and easier. I just think that's great. So a nice unexpected I, I consequence. Yeah. Um, um, and I, I think this is one of those things that when we see, uh, when we look into the future in, in, in two or three years ago, remember when that was introduced, that was cool. Because yes, quality is a thing. Um, but I, 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 I genuinely think having predefined uh, they're not snippets, but pattern snippets, whatever you want to call them. Yep. They're, they're solving a problem. Yeah. Um, I, oh, I, yeah. I, I, have an, I, I have an uncle who, who really understands how to add stuff to his, but every single time when it comes to layout and even with the block editor, and he, then I get the question. So this is the example I'm seeing. Can you make that for me? I, and when you once you've made it, I can understand how to copy it and create versions of it. But can yeah. you set it, put it together for me? And that's exactly what this is solving. Yes, many, oh, yeah, many. Go on, Ines. Sorry. No, I just said I I completely agree. Um, the I guess the intention will be that at some point there there is like a curated set of this kind of stuff, and hopefully there'll be some sort of ranking system where if we've got five thousand hero patterns in the directory there will be some mechanism for kind of filtering out the ones which are i don't know have a have been made with more time and thought shall we say but uh yeah really really nice point uh Remkus. yeah it's it's great especially if non-technical people can really get to grips with their website quickly okay that's very cool so one more time that's wordpress.org forward slash patterns forward slash new pattern you will need a wordpress.org account i i have not played with it so i don't know how intuitive uh it is but it, it looks as if it is there's some menu items at the top which you need to be mindful of but apart from that you should be off to the races okay sadly a couple of years ago there was this really dreadful piece of news and it kind of kind of was right at the beginning of the whole covid thing in fact i, I seem to remember that it dovetailed well, perfectly is the exact wrong word. It was the opposite. WordCamp Asia uh, came along, and and it was within days. I think probably a week or two weeks of happening, and the the COVID pandemic occurred, and the decision, which we'll get into with Innes in a minute, actually, she got an interesting thought about this. The decision was made to pull the event, and it hasn't been 
Um, it hasn't been going since then, but it looks like it's back. The the WordCamp Central website has an article um, asking all about people who would like to become organizers. So we're at that point. We're not at the kind of speaker stage. We're at the point of organizing the organizers. And if you are in that part of the world or you wish to travel to that part of the world, uh, in 2023, and it's happening in February, then now is the time uh, to get on with that. And let me just see if I can find the original post that that article came from. Here we go. It's asia.wordcamp.org, and it's the piece is called Call for Organizers. And it's the usual thing. You go and tell them why you, you think you'd be a, an organizer and a good one. There's some criteria. You have to be available <laughs> during WordCamp. Yeah, that seems fairly sensible. You have to residency in Asia or active involvement in Asia, in the Asian WordPress community. That's also up there. Can commit at least three hours per week for planning. Uh, this may increase right before the event. I'm sure that Remkus can give us the number of hours that are involved in organizing a major WordCamp. Be able to attend weekly, bi-weekly meetings as needed and have diversity as a core belief. So you've got basically just under a year if for this whole thing to be pulled together. First things first, uh, Remkus, as one of the founders of WordCamp Europe, um, what was your thoughts on this when it all got pulled and cancelled? must have been heartrending, I would have thought. Lots of work just basically thrown away. Yeah, that's that's such a big event. So many people slated to come. In fact, there were, I think the flights had already started filling up with people actually going there. Yes. I think this uh, a week prior or two weeks prior. I'm pretty sure people started flying that way already, planning a little trip ahead of it and such. Uh, that's 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 uh, I can't imagine the 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 sadness and disappointment of having that event cancelled right before it actually uh, was going to happen for the very first time. And it's and it's quite unique that it actually came about, right? So. Um, the, the unification uh, process happening there for all the communities involved. Um, that's a huge impact. That's and and to see that just dissipate like poof, gone. Yeah, that's 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 heart wrenching. Well, lo as luck would have it, the interest seems still to be there, and um, and so yeah, this is really just me raising awareness as to the fact that you if you are willing to be an organizer and fulfill those criteria you can give us give us a little taste room because you know, th those criteria obviously they're geographically bound but there was there was a couple in there in terms of time like three hours per week obviously you yeah. can't speak for wordcamp asia but does it, it how, how much is going on in the background and how what is the level of commitment do you, are you would if you were organizing this event are you really after seriously committed people, or can you sort of drop in and drop out of it? Uh, you cannot do the latter. No, mm. no. So the the um, just consider this: the amount of uh, people coming uh, and the care that the amount of people uh, require does not grow linear, linear. It grows a little bit exponential. So the larger you get, the way more you need to have taken care of. Um, and that also means more people on the ground, obviously. So involvement dropping in and out, I guess for some some roles there is some fluidity, but in general, no. No. And three hours is uh is fine for the first six months. I guess. That's <laughs> and then it goes north. <laughs> it, it, it definitely goes north, yes. <laughs> yeah. You, um, Innes, before we began, you had an interesting take because we, we were just throwing around the stories that we would probably talk about. And I mentioned this one and you, uh, you had something quite interesting to say about the, about the way it was cancelled last time. Um, no, just... I think that that was Cameron, but I'm happy to, to kind of, uh, rephrase what he said. Um, um... No, it was the way that uh, the decision was not made by the organizing team, but by Matt. So, um, yeah, I believe what Cameron said was that uh, the he felt the decision should have been on the organizing team rather than, you know, one person stepping in and saying, 
well, I'm pulling the plug on this now. Whether you're against or for the decision itself doesn't really matter. It's the the organizing team should have had uh, authority in that regard because should, it, should it, have know, not been bypassed. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I understand that there was a need for making a quick decision. Um, you know, uh, two years on, we we know what the consequences of of not having done that would have been. Um, but yeah, definitely the organizing team should have been the ones in in place of authority there. Yeah, I suppose the argument would be one of time, wouldn't it? With the fact that a decision needed to be made quickly, because I don't really know what was tied up in all of that in terms of refunding things and, um, you know, preventing people from getting on planes because a delay of 12 hours might have seen another two or 300 people embark and get themselves on a plane and, you know, then find find out midair that the whole event's been cancelled. That would have been greatly, greatly disappointing. So, yeah, maybe it was just about timing and in order to sort of forestall all of that. Regardless, it, the message still should have not come the way it came. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Cameron, as that was your point and not Innes's, and I miss misspoke there are you able to are you able to get your mic going now and your camera going and give a response to that i'll give i'll give a few seconds and see if you can chip in but it sounds from the comments that you're putting in the private chat it does sound like cameron's getting a dreadful delay of sort of 30 seconds where he can't hear us and 30 seconds where he can so it might be that he can't even hear what i'm saying now I'll just pause for a second see if you can get in the conversation Doesn't look like it. No. Okay. All right. Well, we'll press on. Okay. That was WordCamp Asia. Um, obviously, at some point fairly soon, once they've got the organizing team sorted, they'll probably be looking for speakers and people to attend. Book market. What were the dates? I know it said February. There you go. 17th is the tentative date. 17th of February uh, in the year 2023. Okay. Oh, that's my birthday. Wouldn't be bad. <laughs> nice. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Which one is your birthday? The nineteenth. Oh, oh, so come on! I think that's a great excuse to go to Thailand. That's where it is. Yeah, but I can't because my daughter's birthday is the eighteenth. So. Oh. Ah. Remkus won't be going, so she's going to send Innes in in his stead. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, Cameron, I'm so sorry about that. He says he's putting things in our little private chat. He says that when you switch to the screen share, the, it gets better for a minute or two. Cameron, if this is totally not working out for you, I, what the last thing I want to do is have you just sitting here uh, if it's frustrating and a bit awkward. So if if you wish to just call it a day, I think I think everybody would understand. But if you want to stick, stick with us on the off chance that it repairs itself, that would be that would be lovely too. Okay, right. Next one up. This is. This is cool. I really like this. This is a new thing. Sarah Gooding in the tavern um, talks about a new, a new. Well, I'm going to say plugin. Snow Monkey Editor plugin adds custom styles to WordPress core blocks. Um, I think Cameron has now made the decision that he's going to head off. So maybe we'll see him again later. Let's see. Essentially, um, limited styling. If you've got one of these third-party block packs, like, I don't know, Cadence or CoBlox or um, Stackable or something like that, they those those plugin developers have gone to great lengths to pack in as many different styling options to their blocks. So they might have a, a rival, uh, I don't know, heading block. And rather than it just being you can change the H value, you maybe you can underline things or add all sorts of wizardry to it. But with the core blocks, the styling is really limited in most cases, almost to the point where you you kind of find them a little bit unusable in certain situations. If it's not just plain text, you, you might well find yourself looking around for a third-party solution. So somewhat ingeniously, and I'm kind of surprised that this hasn't been done so far, the, the developers of, over at Snow Monkey, which is a curious name, um, have created an ability to download their plugin, and then it brings along a load of styling options just, just to the core blocks. So it's not like they've got their own blocks with styling options. This is just 
the core blocks. So for example, at the minute on the screen, we're looking at the paragraph option. Um, and really there's nothing with the paragraph. You've just got the, the basic, you know, italics, bold, underline, that's more or less it. I think you can add a class in the sidebar and so on. But this has got a whole load of different visual options. So there's color options, there's a drops cap option and various other different things. Just I recognize the dog. Uh, really? Yeah. That's Who's Sarah's dog? dog. That's Sarah's <laughs> dog. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so that we're seeing a picture of a dog on the screen because we're there's the the image option and really very limited amount of options in the core block for images you basically put it in and i think you can put rounded corners on it and that's about it seems like there's a bit of a bit of a meme going around the internet at the moment where you, you might want to i don't even know what this effect is called where you you make images sort of egg shaped or they're kind of like puddle shape you know they're just irregular with rounded corners i'm sure there'll be a word for that so you can do that and it comes with i can see six on the screen at the moment but i'm sure there'd be more uh list items again it's very basic you can change a dot into a arrow and and a couple of other things but that's about it so different options for that and background colors and so on you you basically invoke it by downloading the plugin and then they put this uh, and i don't know what to say about this there's a blue little snow monkey icon, and I'm not all that keen on the blueness of the snow monkey icon. It's it's a bit like when you get a plugin in the WordPress admin area, and it's got like the icon for that is like bright red or something. It just ah. Uh, is it really so a that, monkey? Uh, it's like a monkey's face. You know, a snow monkey. It's got that kind of. It's got like it's like wearing I, goggles. So I'm I'm ha so I think in pictures and imagery and stuff and now you have the trouble ah oh, okay so ah, that makes sense now I see. It's a can you see it it's, it's like um it's like yeah it, I mean it basically yeah. looks like like a like a World War Two bomb or something being dropped um, <laughs> the you've got the eyes and you've got the little sort of well not smiley it's the opposite it's like a grumpy looking mouse but yeah, the, the fact is it's blue and that's to me like no no don't do that you can but see more in this than just that though but uh, yeah. yeah yeah so uh, you you invoke that and then you've got absolutely boatload of things that you can do so you know it brings up a whole load of options text color letter spacing line line height, formatting, remove formatting, font size, badges, background color. And actually, on the example that we're using at the moment, which is just a plain paragraph block, it, it kind of spices it up. So, you know, I really this, like what it does. Yeah, isn't it nice? I really like what it does. Yeah. And for me, the best Same. bit is the fact that it's just with core blocks. They haven't taken the approach of doing anything snazzy of their own. I, it's just I do block. wonder what they're all loading in the background. So if this is adding a whole bunch of style sheets for just a few options you might use, that's a, mm. a little bit of a waste. So I, I, I'd be curious to know how they actually generate the CSS and how they um, uh, load it. But in terms of what it does, I like. Yeah. Also, Ines? one of the things that um, I'm I think I noticed is that it, it kind of loads the edit block that you would have on the right on the on in the sidebar within the block itself. Is that right? Uh, yeah, you see that right there. What do you mean? I'll sh I'll show the yeah. I'll show the one of the dog. Yeah. Yeah, so that would normally be full height in uh, on the right of your screen. I, I yeah, I, I don't is. know. I, block. I, yeah, I think he's I think just got a, a tiny there. screen. Yeah. 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 Ah, okay. Yeah, I think I think because uh, at the top here I can see the words block and page just here. I think that implies oh, yeah that, sorry. that it is. No, no, it's okay. It's easy to understand easy to misunderstand that. But yeah, I think just for the purposes of clarity, he's um was it Sarah that's done this? Yes, yeah, Sarah has just zoomed right in in order to keep it nice and simple. Um Yeah, I thought you were the one highlighting the stuff. That's that's where my mistake went. Yeah. Well, th there's a couple of other extras it brings along to the ride, which I actually think make it even possibly even more valuable. Um, and that's the option to, to a particular block based upon screen size. So according to this, you've got um, tablet, PC. Um, it's using a media query. You can hide a particular block by a user role. So I don't know. You could you could almost use this That's for kind very of like, interesting. Yeah, like membership content or something like that. You know, yeah. if you've if you have bought a particular I don't know if you've got a particular WooCommerce role or something like that, then show this or don't show that. Um, scroll animations. Yep. 
Okay. Publish date time settings. Again, so rather than just being user roles, you can actually set a time for this particular block to expire. So I'm thinking, I don't know, Black Friday sales block or something like that seems yeah, kind of nice. Adds. Um, and you can also add a lock to the capacity to edit it based upon user roles. The administrator, according to Sarah's piece, is the only person that could set it. So if I'm the administrator and you are an editor, I could say, yes, you may fiddle with this block, but no, you subscriber, you may not. So it's got a lot more. It's almost like a very, very slimmed down um, kind of membership style solution thrown in there as well. So I'm very excited about this. I still think you need a membership. Uh, oh, I do. De yeah. de dedicated thing, but uh, this is this is nice. This is really nice in what it offers. I just hope they are also considering the performance side of things on the front end. Yeah, the it's very rare. I've got to say, it's pretty rare that I see a block like this, and I actually want to go and download it. Mm. Usually, I sort of look at it and I think, well, that seems curious, you know, but it's a bit edge case for me. But I've run up against so many limitations of the standard WordPress core blocks. And, and honestly, if I can get away with just using the core blocks, that's what I want to do. I don't really want to be loading in additional things. And so if this is lightweight and it does the job, and um, maybe, who knows, maybe somebody can give us a bit of an insight in that in the days and weeks to come. But, but those are the nicest plugins, right? The ones that you go, I kind of want to install this one on every single site. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, rem I remember the last time I had that was with uh, uh, Coco Analytics. Oh, yeah. Because you have so many people just, I need to see a little bit about who visits my site and this does this and does that. And Coco Analytics was a beautiful solution. And it, all you had to do was install it. It was private. It was no, uh, you know, um, there's no uh, cookies and all of that. But people got a little bit of a dashboard, a little bit of an insight. Perfect. I installed that for all the sites of my family members and all that. You know, one of those, so, and this sounds like exactly one of those plugins. Like, a, this is really cool. Yeah, like, this is this is. I know they're gonna want to use this. Like my uncle, the one I mentioned, he's he's gonna love this one. Yeah, and he does this. This is what they do. And we, it's we, just we, leveraging what's already there, which is what I think is so ingenious because yeah. you don't, Very you know, clever. you're not going down the the rabbit hole. So presumably. I don't know. Typically, with these kind of things, the, the free version comes out. Who knows? Maybe in the future they'll add in some. They'll jam pack it with like loads of extra options. Maybe there'll be a paid version. No idea. But you can. Uh, it was March thirtieth. It was written. WP Tavern. It's called Snow Monkey Editor Plugin. Adds custom styles to WordPress core blocks. What was that one called again, Remkus? I'm going to write it down. Coco. Coco, Coco Analytics by like C O C O. Golden. Uh, see, yeah, yeah, uh, no, KO, 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 KO. Knock out. Okay, I think that that is typically good what old I Danny. Need. Yep, that's uh, of a con countryman of ours. Oh, okay. What was the name yeah, again? Just to, to give him some him. props. Uh, uh, Denny van Koden. Nice. I have Thank no you, idea how to pronounce that one, in English way. He's the one behind the Milton for WordPress plugin. Yeah, oh, okay. That's and, been around and, for and, and one of the founders ages. of uh, Fathom as well. That's also analytics, isn't it? Yep. But yeah, is he, that more uh, on the SaaS side? Uh, yeah, but he, is that uh, really he started it. He says. A Fathom? No, really simple CSS, I believe, is, is another one of his plugins. That's quite oh, um... possible. He has, a few, he, has a, he has some really neat uh, plugins out there. Um, mm. There's the. The pop-up thingy, what is it called? Boxilla, Boxilla, or something like that. Yeah, Boxilla. Yeah, it's yeah. a derivative of Milton for WordPress. So I used to do support yeah. for yeah. Milton for WordPress, so I know all of you it. Did. You did, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we stumbled into a real little little niche here, haven't we? I'm going to yeah. go and check out the Coco Analytics one though, because typically that's what I want. I want the the bare bones. Basically, I want to know how many times that page got loaded, and. Yeah. Not a lot beyond that. You know, I don't really want to be delving into sort of, I don't know, what age group they fit in. Maybe geographical location could be of some interest, but basically I want to know how many times the page was loaded. And I, I think mm. I think things like Google Analytics, there's just too much in there for me. Too overpowered. Oh, yeah. just way too overpowering. And yeah. every time I log in, 
I am overwhelmed because I now no longer know where anything is. Um, <laughs> going like I don't go in. Yep. Maybe every six months to sort of get some kind of report that I want every six months. I was I was going to ask you log in, in about uh, once every six months, right? Yeah, yeah that's about it. And then uh, and then complete confusion. Where are the things? And also, I just don't understand the language. So show me show me the number of visitors. All right, Coco Analytics. I'm taking your. You're, uh, I'm you're taking like that your one. Advice. Okay, thank you. That's good. We should do that. We should have that as a section. Recommended blocks or recommended plugins. Each week, one of the guests should bring a um, bring one of their little choices along. So yeah, okay, I right. We're 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 running out of things here, which is good because, I, like I said at the top, I've got to take my son to the dentist. But I thought this one was quite interesting. Uh, do you know what? The more that I forgive me if you are big Facebook lovers. But the more that I hear about Facebook and the more things that I learn about Facebook, the less inclined I am to have any love for them at all. Uh, And I can't speak as to whether this next piece um, represents the truth or not, but I'll just pop it on the screen. It's on a website called um, uh, gadgeteer.co.za. And, oh, please... It's called Facebook sued for overstating advertising reach. So we're, we're straying away from WordPress now. Court expanded the pool of plaintiffs to include more than 2 million small ad buyers. The long and the short of it is um, apparently, and again, I'm sure we will find out through due process. So I'm going to pro- paraphrase everything because Facebook, I suspect, have some quite good lawyers. I'm going to say the word allegedly. For years, Facebook repeatedly confronted a choice between telling customers the truth or preserving its revenue. And at every turn, Facebook chose its revenue, lawyers say, for ad buyers. Basically, the story goes like this. If you've been buying ads on the Facebook platform, which almost everybody, um, almost everybody in business will consider doing, whether or not they actually part with any money, it will definitely be on the list of things to check out if you want to promote your business online. Uh, Apparently, Google, sorry, Facebook, (laughs) Google, maybe we could have this same exact conversation, substitute Potato, potato. Google, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, But apparently they've been just massaging the figures. So, like, fake profiles count as... Uh, as a view of your advert. Imagine any way in which something which shouldn't be tracked as a, as a, as an, as a impression of your ad, there must be multitudes of things that Facebook know the metrics is that's not real. That never happened that we shouldn't count that, but apparently they don't. Um, And what I just, if I'd have spent a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, whatever, on the Facebook network, and this lawsuit manages to find that there is evidence of this, I, man alive, I would be so quite cross. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. You would be, but the reason they're getting away with it because is or have been because these suspicions have been um have been there for quite a while um yes. years yeah so i i think people are i think they're they're getting away with it because there's still a result yeah so if you so mean what, would you really how... care if your result percentage went from i don't know uh 13.7 percent uh and it would then be reduced to 12.1 would you would you really like you're you're putting a hundred thousand in, but you're getting back, you know, a, a substantial return on investment. I don't know because I, I think you could make the same argument. Let's say that you go to a car dealership and you agree to pay thirteen thousand pounds for a new car, and you show up and the guy says, "I've just changed my mind. It's going to be another hundred quid. It's only yeah. it's like not point north. It's not point three percent. Don't worry yeah. about it. Just." Give me the extra yeah. money, and I, I'm know. not saying I, I agree with the statement. I'm saying I'm playing devil's advocate. Oh yeah, no, I realize. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's there's, there's a, like if if you if you found out, would it really change everything so much? No, not the, really. But you you you'd never trust him again. But 
Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, but that's the I'll, bit that I'll I take it one get. step further. I'm of the opinion you should never trust Facebook. You should never trust Google. Period. <laughs> yeah, devil's out, Honestly, out the window. I, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's gone. That's gone. <laughs> I think yeah. after all of these years of of uh, lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, Facebook has has proven themselves to be utterly unreliable. Um, yeah. Very similar to to Amazon. Uh, if you don't, if you don't really have a need for it, maybe not use it you know. at all ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Beth makes a good point, and and maybe maybe this speaks to what the what the problem really is right now, especially. Um, Beth Livingston says we used to get results yeah. with the new iOS stuff, which I'll explain in a minute. It's way harder and way more expensive, so I think they're going to lose lots of folks. Uh, and this lawsuit means more abdicators. So maybe that's the point. They are literally terrified of what has happened on the Apple side. So just to paint the picture there, I think it was like iOS update about six months ago, something along those lines. You now have to you have to give permission to Facebook if they wish to track you. And the way that the language is worded, that that permission option really suggests don't click yes it's something like i agree to be tracked by facebook and you know that word yep. is toxic isn't it um, <laughs> but you know, it's just, accurate though yeah 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 but if you, yeah. i wish to be tracked uh i've got two choices here okay i'll go for the tracking yeah why not so my my I, estimation is that's just destroyed traffic from it is it is the, there's there's been there's been numbers uh published somewhere uh, i think a couple of weeks ago about the um the percentage of of loss of income just by facebook not being able to track and they are shitting themselves so this is businesses who've been reliant upon facebook and like, like to your point a minute ago remkus there is no doubt historically there was it was a complete no brainer to spend money in certain areas with certain yep. with a certain level of knowledge of how to use that platform and retarget people it mm -hmm. it was it was brilliant and maybe it still is brilliant but if your demographic are iphone carriers and you are um you know you're reading stuff like this you are going to be I would be predisposed now to to make Rob's point. Um, Rob Cairns has just written this. He says, it's hard to get Facebook ads to convert. It's almost not worth it. And, and I guess at some point that will become the default. You'll just be like, what? I can't be bothered with that. I know that they're conning me anyway. So yep. why bother? Let's go. Let's let's try. Let's go for Google instead. Yay. So <laughs> as you might know, there's a, a Facebook for WooCommerce plugin yeah. um that's fairly new i think it's it's maybe two or three years old at this point um was originally created by facebook themselves then it was transported to woocommerce and now it's but i'm not exactly sure what the status of it okay. is right now um but the happiness engineers on the woocommerce end had a lot of interaction with facebook to get support going in some way and the experience that i personally have had with facebook is that it's very similar to to paypal if you have any experience Evil professionally Corp. with paypal you <laughs> know what a bloody headache it is to work with our company because they're all like tiny little independent products that all fall under the same name and Facebook is exactly the same. They they have these small little teams that work on a specific thing. And then when it doesn't work, it just gets abandoned. But there's like thousands of people using it. And it, I don't, it, this feels feels very similar. I don't um, want to go all, all, all conspiracy, but it, 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 that sounds like it's by design, right? If you have small teams that are yeah. so independent of each other, you cannot collaborate so nobody sees the real picture and then we get we get I we get essentially what we have with the ads too much uh counted i think I, it's I, twofold I on the on the one end, end it allows you to um produce something very very quickly 
So if you have an independent team that doesn't have to go through, I don't know how many protocols in order to release something, you can get something up and running really quickly. And then on the other hand is what you said is, you know, there's no oversight, there's no collaboration between products and things just fall apart or get aban abandoned and users don't get told. So no. things change and things look different all of a sudden. And it's like, well, no one's really responsible and, and support doesn't really know where to go with this. So, you know, whatever, figure it out, sort of, I don't know. I, I'm um, so so disinclined though to to trust Facebook on almost every level now and things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give some complexion to this story, it does say that, and I actually didn't realize that this has been going on for so long. So it would appear that people have been pursuing this lawsuit for a very 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 long time, but um, the judge finally has said, "Look, this can now go forward because apparently, to quote, there was a blunderbuss of objections, which I presume is like a, just a litany, one after another, by Facebook in order to essentially, I guess, just prevaricate, prevent, get the lawyers to make things go away for a little bit, and six months later, come up with some other way of making it go away. But it would appear that that now they've run out of runway and is now it's going to happen. So we'll see. But t to your point, Remkus, I, I guess if it is 0.1%, people are going to stick around because that's fine. But if we find out this is 10% or God help us, you know, more than that, where, I think. Whoa. Where's your limit? Yeah, uh, um, about 0.01% is my limit, to be honest. No, z z zero. <laughs> Absolutely well, zero. if it's if it's provable, I mean, if there's if they've got data which categorically shows that we we genuinely are finding it difficult to know where the boundary is between fake click, real click, and they can yep. prove that, then okay, you know, I'm sure that's the case in all sorts of real world scenarios that 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 would. But if if it can be proven that they knew and just totally ignored it because money was, uh, it says here. Um, uh, I think I read it all out. A Facebook was confronted with a choice between telling customers the truth or prever prever yeah. preserving its revenue at every turn. Facebook chose its revenue, so that's the that's the debate. I think we're going to have. perverting the revenue is also a good way of phrasing it. To be honest, yeah. there's, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, yeah. in, in, uh, in, what what is the net, that uh, Netflix documentary called? Uh, oh, the social, social dilemma. dilemma. Yeah, yeah. I actually rewatched. Just keep that, that in. I have to just keep that in mind as you're processing these types of things. Just have you that seen in that, Ines? Have you seen the social dilemma? I have not. Okay, no. I, I won't. I won't spoil it. But essentially, it's a it's a big hit piece on any sort of social. Is that network. the one with Emma Watson? No. no, it's it's not it's not a drama. It's more of a documentary, and it's sort of like here's it's from an insider. About. Yeah, and the the connection to yeah. Cambridge Analytica and uh, oh, that whole cesspool. Uh, and, but it's uh, beautifully you, done, isn't it? Because yeah. they come up with they yeah, come yeah, up yeah. this idea of like that they they put people behind screens who are pretending to be Facebook's brain. So it's a brilliant conceit, a really clever little trick that they did. Where so the Facebook is basically having an internal conversation, like you know, there's people actually talking about what they're going to do, rather than it being an algorithm. The algorithm are human beings deciding, and it yeah, makes it's, it, it's, it's it's fun. Yeah, but. Really go and watch it. Yeah, like I said, Rem, because I watched it again about, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. And I have to say the first time I found it like a bit shocking. The second time I watched it, more percolated into my head. And I found it more, even more shocking, to be honest. And um, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people still have the the idea that the people in power and whether or not that's political power or or power like Facebook, um, corporations. corporations that they know what they're doing yeah. that the people yeah. in charge yeah. actually have have a good clue of what they're doing and yeah. a lot of people just really do not yeah well they're just yeah. it's basically humans at the end of the day it's quite interesting here right. as well that beth makes is it beth yeah beth makes the point that um maybe there's yeah. an opportunity for for us because oh really for the longest time people in my local community they utterly avoided the point of having a website because a Facebook page genuinely did what they want. So there's a there's like a little row of shops quite close to where I live, like half a mile away. 
90% of that little row of shops, they don't have a website. They have a Facebook page. And mm. that seems to serve Boring. them. And, it, and it, it ranks. You know, if you search for this particular shop, it comes up on Google. So it's been effective. But like you say, Remkus, the word is... Uh. <laughs> Horrid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway... Yeah, no, um, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't help that Facebook now allows for things like um, making appointments and making payments through Facebook. So you don't even have to... Use we the should in, stop feeding the beast. Browsing. Yeah, stop feeding the beast. Yeah. Right. We're addicted. And that's what comes out of the film is the – it's not so much how um, benign or aggressive the tech is. It is literally that we have all become addicted and, and you have to notice that you are addicted. And that little look at 3 o'clock in the morning is totally – not something you ever should be doing because it just it feeds you more and more. Anyway, from all of that mess to something a little bit more positive, I'm glad to share this. This is nice. A few weeks ago, we ran a competition because we did 200 episodes. Yay! Um, and we ran a competition, and the, the kind people at Yoast um, offered us a couple of prizes. The, the kind people at Stella WP offered us a couple of prizes. And so also the kind people at Cadence WP. I also in, you know, just claimed that you could win a cat to just basically try and boost the uh, the interest in. Basically, more or less everybody who entered this competition. It's fake news, Nathan. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Facebook all over your eyes. That's right. <laughs> More or less everybody. I like how you bridged from the previous topic. Had to, had, <laughs> yeah. It's spot on. <laughs> That's right. It's spot on. More or less everybody who entered this competition uh, told me that they wanted to win the cat because all you had to do was pick. You said, I want the Yoast prize, the Stella WP prize, the Cadence prize, or the cat prize, or all four or whichever combination. Just about everybody <laughs> said they wanted the cat, even though I went to great lengths to say, you can't win a cat i said you can't win a cat this is there's no cat on offer it's just a picture of a cat have you any idea how complex and cruel it would be to shit I don't, a I, cat i don't feel like you tried i don't feel like you tried <laughs> i just, just didn't yeah that's right I'm, anyway i'm waiting for my main coon we have some winners needless to say look nobody won the cat it's there in blue and white but these following people are the the winners of the the competition the yoast prizes and i can't tell you which ones you've won because i haven't got it on my screen but um nana uwakwe she is a winner so is tina cook gareth win muhammad yusuf you've all won something from yoast the stella wp prizes were taken by peter ingersoll craig patterson meg appleby uh, mike martin michael carnell and max zebal uh, I presume, sorry, Max, if I've butchered your name, and he's often listening in the comments, so I apologize if I've done that. And Cadence WP prizes were taken by Rob Kent, who is in the chat. Um, Toes, T O Z E, Vasconcellos, Philip Levine, Antonio Escudero, Richard Needish, or Needish. Uh, oh, he's won twice. I think that's a typo. And Anne Hennigar. So you are the prize winners. Yay, congratulations. I wish I had a bell sound or dip, 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 dip. should get a trumpet out at this point. Um, uh, what I've done is I've, I've sent all of the details of the winners because you did include your email address. I've sent your email address to the respective companies and asked them to reach out to you. So if they don't reach out to you, it's completely their fault. I've got nothing to <laughs> No, If they don't reach out to you, just, I don't know, email me admin at WP builds and I'll make sure to, to hook you up with your prize. But, um, the, the, but I have communicated. I and in the, in full disclosure, I have now deleted, I've, I've basically deleted all the places apart from the email that I sent your emails. I've expunged them from the WordPress database. So hopefully we're, we're still GDPR compliant. Are you, are you seeing the chat, Nathan? Because oh, no, what's happening in the they're, chat now? They're, they're fighting over the cat, and it's... <laughs> you can't have the cat. There is no split, cat. It's a big in half. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. This could be fun. To be fair, I mean, I I know a company called Klaus, a QA 
platform. Should, maybe I can show you quickly the kind of socks that I'm wearing currently. Oh yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me let me make the screen bigger. <laughs> do, do that once more. Do that again. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> the cat socks. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> it's a consolation prize. I think. Yeah. That's, that's I, I can I can I can ask if um, if they have some swag. That well, the, the, nobody is allowed to win the cap, but you are the first person who showed their socks on this podcast, so <laughs> you get an award for that. That's yes. brilliant. So let's see what <laughs> let's see. What, Michelle Frechette says she's waiting for the cap. Can I just reiterate? There is no cat. You can't win a cat. It's cruel. Is this like a no, there is no spoon thing? Is that <laughs> what it is? There's no spoon. <laughs> yeah. Um, look at this. This is ridiculous. Cameron Jones. Oh, Cameron, I'm so sorry that you were forced to just dwell in the comments and lurk about. I will definitely get you back on. He's disappointed he didn't win the cat. Um, Michelle's come back with, do you want to share a cat? Look, it gets worse. What are you going to do? Slice it in two. And, um, okay. Um, Rob Cairns puts a prize that is fitting. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, you've got the you've got the cadence one. Um, and Beth said, "Dang it, I would have loved the cadence coffee mug." Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, Peter, you got a prize. Cameron's talking about getting half a cat each. Courtney, that cat might really talk a lot. Past. What I need to do is purchase a fluffy cat, a small fluffy cat which will easily go inside of a little box and post that and we can attach a wp builds logo and it can go from port to port and yeah oh my goodness the comments just keep going i'm going to stop talking about the cat there's uh <laughs> enough comments look we're not okay <laughs> okay one last one uh courtney is allergic to cats she cannot accept an indoor cat. It's okay courtney you're in luck because there was never a cat on offer i am so going to do a cat prize next time that's all i've got uh, do you guys have anything have you got anything that you want to add did i miss something uh no that's fine that in our show notes we have the option to put a pick of the week that kind of was my pick of the week um so i i have a i have a very selfish pick go on do it yeah so we're hiring a lot oh no that's not selfish that's brilliant no go on Tell us. Job, Jobs.surfboat.com. And we currently have nine positions open, which includes uh, support for US uh, and, and a whole bunch of more. Um, it's. Uh, well, it's, no, it, come on. Let's, let's it's not, it's not comparable to a cat. It's, it, it, no, it, I mean, come know. on. I mean, everybody wants a cat. Nobody really wants employment. Oh, duh. Um, <laughs> customer service representative in the USA. It's on the screen at the minute. Jobs.servebolt.com. Team lead support USA. Marketing yep. specialist. Cloud operations engineer. DevOps engineer. These are all full time, by the way. Uh, Back end PA. And most Python of them are remote. Yep. Oh, really? Okay, that's yep. cool to know. Backend Python developer, backend PHP developer, business developer partners, and a head of engineering. Blimey heck, one of them has got a Oslo attached tag. So I'm guessing yes. one of them needs one. to be not remote Correct. with the rest. Yeah. Yep. For the support positions, because um, you might want to um, uh, post that in the um, uh, support driven Slack channel if you know what that, what that is. That on my uh, I think I, I think I do. There is a Slack uh, channel specifically for people in support, and if you post it in there, I'm I'm really certain you're going to find something, someone. Sorry, very quickly. Yeah, that's uh, that I I knew of it. I forgot about it, but uh, I think uh, Taco has mentioned it to me uh, at one point. Yeah, at, he's been uh, there yours. for years. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to exactly. throw oh, in. Thanks for that. I am going to throw in another one. Oh, oh and by the way, Rim, just don't feel bad about that. I'm delighted, oh, that I'm... Come on, delighted that you've come on the show. It's brilliant. And uh, you mentioned in the fact that there's employment options at your, your company is blooming excellent. Don't, don't feel bad about that at all. I'm going to just mention another totally random thing, and I cannot put this on the screen. This is, well, you know, we were banging on about Facebook, and then we sort of had a few little jabs at Google. There's a new search engine in town. And it's not called Doc.go. It is called uh, it is called Kagi, K A G I dot com. It's in beta, 
And I've been told, and I don't know if this is true, that it's it was it's been created by the guy that started Manage WP. And yeah. I've been using it for the last couple of weeks, no, month. I've completely obliterated using DocDocGo and uh, Google. What's what's his name again? Um... I've, I've forgotten his name, to be honest. I, I didn't find that information out. It was a friend of mine who, who was curious and then just went off yeah. looking. He said, oh, it's the guy that started Manage WP, which I think they started yeah, and he to moved, Daddy. Yeah, he did. And he moved to uh, the US, to California. If I, okay. Uh, and this is right. obviously what he was doing. Now, here's yeah. the curious Thanks. twist, right? Whilst it's in beta, so you have to sign up for a beta list. You can use it for free. When they're out of beta, you've got to pay. And I I know this is going to sound ridiculous and privileged. Yes. I'm really into the idea of paying for search that is unadulterated by any kind of corporate interest apart from their own. So um, that's yeah. a good example. If, uh, if we're saying the, the ad stuff is a problem, which... Facebook is confirming is it is uh, the other way around is uh, so stop asking uh, st stop offering stuff for free and start yeah. asking for even nominal fees but the sheer volume mm. uh, and then the quality connected to it will I like for instance if if Instagram offered and I uh, I'm aware that Instagram is part of the Meta Facebook but if Instagram offered a version no ads and there was a couple of bucks a month I'd happily pay because I get a lot Same. of joy out of it. Uh, and the same goes for ads. I'm, I, I use Brave Search. I use DuckDuckGo Search. I rarely use Google if it's not. Uh, I mean, uh, for work, I, I will use Google, but the rest I won't. Uh, and I'll happily pay for it. Yeah, I think the mooted price you pay was money 19. Or in data. Yeah, I, yeah, that's from Rob. Uh, you pay in money or in data. I think I think the price that was mooted is ninety nine dollars a year. And honestly, internet search is one of those things that. It seems free, right? It's totally, we've all been used to it being free, but at some point you are being, you are paying for it. But it's also one of those things that I habitually use every single day. Yeah, and I would happily pay that amount of money for a search engine that delivered results. So far, it's been epic. There's not a single search that I've put in where I've got weird results or a, or a lack of results. It seems pretty decent so it's kagi k-a-g-i dot com and i'm just throwing that in right at the very end can i can i make a, a very quick self-promotional thing because it might be very interesting for for the people listening so i'm writing a book currently i've had 12 years of experience in the customer support field specifically within wordpress i've worked with a ton of different developers and i'm writing customer support for WordPress developers, um, nice. which is going to be launching in the first half of this year. Um, and if you go to my website, qualityinsupport.com, you can sign up for a list that will notify you as soon as it gets released. That's cool. I once started writing a book once called How Not to Start Stuff. <laughs> but I, ne I You but were I frustrated? I never got around to doing it. You never finished. <laughs> no, I never started. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I thought that would no, be actually a really good book one day, of producing a book called How Not to Start Stuff, and it was basically <laughs> blank paper. It was just like a, a book of <laughs> nothing. It's like the perfect time-saving thing. Here's, how, here's a lesson on how not to do stuff. Anyway, there you go. Um, awesome. I don't know if you saw this, Remkus, but Michelle is doing her careers summit, WP Careers Summit soon. I saw, and she's I saw, I really heavily involved that. with post stats. So, yeah, maybe share that link over there. Okay, I've got to take people to dentists and all that good stuff. So I'm going to have to run away. But thank you so much. I apologize sincerely to Cameron. We had obviously some sort of tech malfunction, but I would dearly love you to come back. Thanks for sticking around in the comments. Um, oh, no. Cameron's just just right on the end there, snuck one in. I was reading a book about anti-gravity, but I couldn't put it down. I had to, had to share that right yeah. at the end. Come back on, Cameron. I would love that. And Remkus, thanks for coming on again. And Ines, thanks, sure, uh, thank you. Ines, thanks for coming on as well. Can we do our little wavy thing? I know that Ines doesn't know about this, but we all have to do the little wavy thing at the end so that I can get the screen grab. That's it. We're done. We'll be back next week. Thank you so much for your comments. There's been loads today. Thanks a lot.